All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Stephanie Bree. Um, I am bringing you the uh, truth bombs, but also a walk down memory lane. And today we're talking about cable TV memories. So let's let's get a personal backstory before I get into the, you know, the broader cable TV history. Um, so for me, as I've already pointed out multiple, multiple times, we grew up in a very, very poor house. Uh, we did not have the money for cable TV um, back in the day. Uh, so my dad was a part time bagger at a small town local grocery store. And my mom was a babysitter for her friends. And she worked part time at an egg farm, you know, putting eggs in the egg cartons. So we didn't have very, they didn't have very big paychecks. Let's just say they had, you know, food stamps and government assistance and things like that. Um, we had a TV in the living room and we had a, a very small TV that was gifted to us by my grandpa in the kitchen. And that was it. Those were our two TVs and they were both black and white, by the way. They were not in color. And we did not have a VCR. Couldn't have fucking afford it. We didn't get... I, I was born in 82. My parents got married in 1981. We didn't get a microwave until 1993. In the house. A microwave. Because we couldn't fucking afford it. You know, we were poor. Um, but things changed. Um... In the early 90s, 90, 91, somewhere in that ballpark, both of my parents got jobs working at a bus factory, uh, building shuttle buses for, you know, for the, um, for the airports. Which, for the first time in both of their lives, they had steady, decent paychecks, which meant they were making up for lost time. They, the, the, I did a video on my greatest Christmas ever. That was not Christmas. It was the first year I ever got more than one present, and I got fucking bombarded with presents, and I couldn't believe it. It was like, holy shit, are we rich now? We weren't. <laughs> but my parents finally had jobs. So, um, we, we, we did have, um, we did have cable, but we had basic cable. We're going to talk about basic cable in the early days before we get into the later days. Because digital cable is separate from what I'm talking about. We're talking about pre-digital cable. This is the old days. So we're going to talk about that. And then a couple years later, my dad got a um, promo. He got an introductory promo on a brand new satellite service called Prime Star. It was brand new, so he got a special deal on it. So we got satellite TV. Again, this was before digital TV. Satellite TV was totally different than cable. It was, I mean, a lot of the same channels as cable, but also channels you couldn't get on cable. So finally, we had, you know, we had the good stuff. MTV, you know, the Disney Channel, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, Sci-Fi Channel, USA, etc. But we also had channels I never fucking heard of. Like, um, Fucking the Science Channel or A and E. I didn't know what A and E was. Never heard of it. Um, uh, AMC, TCM. They all had acronyms. It was weird. All these channels, all these new channels, knew nothing about them. Um, and then uh, things shifted. You know, my parent. You know, things got better. Uh, that you know, mom got a job as a manager at a restaurant, making good money. Uh, better money than she was making at the factory, uh, believe it or not. Um, well, after the factory laid everybody off, but that's another story. So, we we moved up. We went from dirt poor to lower class, lower middle class. You know, so we moved up a little bit. So then, uh, in the late nineties, uh, we got digital cable. Now, let's talk about. Uh, the difference between cable and digital cable. Cable 
in the early days came in two forms. You could have a co the, the the cable company would run a coax cable to your house from a box outside in the yard, and if they I don't know what they did activated it somehow. It gave you access to channels. You paid them. You sent them a bill, or they sent you a bill. You paid the bill, and they they gave you channels. But it was basic cable. You know, it was the it was the main channels. You know, ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, Fox. And then you got a few bonus channels. You got WGN, TBS, you got USA Network, you got CNN, you got uh, the Nashville Network, TNN, um, you know, and then a handful of others, like six or seven others. I don't remember them all. Not very many. Just a few, a few channels. You know, uh, MTV was on the extended package, so you had to pay extra for MTV as well as Nickelodeon and everything else. So the good channels, so you had basic cable and then you had extended cable. If you had extended cable, you got extra channels. And then on top of that, you had premium channels. Those you had to unlock on an a la carte basis. There was HBO, and it was just HBO. You had to pay however much a month to HBO, and they would unscramble it, and you could watch HBO. There was Showtime and Cinemax. For all intents and purposes, those three channels were indistinguishable. They just played movies all day long. Sometimes they would show, like, you know, pay-per-view type sporting events or, you know, documentaries and things like that. But it was mostly just movies all day long, which was awesome. Now, we couldn't afford, even when we could afford cable, basic cable, we couldn't afford, we still couldn't afford HBO or the premium channels. So we didn't get the premium channels. But we would get them, you know, once or twice a year. Each premium channel would offer a free weekend, a free preview weekend, so you would know what you were missing out on to entice you to want to buy it. This was when my parents invested in a VCR, because once they figured out we could get HBO for free for a weekend, it was pop in the blank tapes and record every fucking movie we could get off of HBO during that weekend, and then we would have movies. And then wait six months for the next free weekend, and so on and so forth. Uh, never really had the money for pay-per-view, but pay-per-view was different back in the early days. In the early days, it was event only. A pay-per-view would be scheduled, like March 25th or whatever, would be WrestleMania. They would, you know, you would call the cable company and say, I want WrestleMania, and then they would charge you 60 bucks or whatever, and then you could watch WrestleMania for three or four hours. And then it was done. The channel went off the air. It literally just disappeared. It wasn't even on the cable. You couldn't chain. You couldn't tune to the channel. It didn't exist. It was only active during the pay per view. And then when the pay per view was done, that channel was gone. The cable company took it off the air. Later, the second form of cable came in the form of a cable box. Now, uh, you either had to have a cable box initially. Unless you had a cable-ready TV. If you had a cable-ready TV, you didn't need the cable box. Um, but if you, had a, if, you had a, if you didn't have a cable-ready TV, you had a cable box. So the cable box was basically, they would plug the coax cable into the cable box, which would unscramble the channels, and then you had to run another coax cable from that to the TV. To, to you, know, you would change the channel on the cable box. The TV was just set to channel 3 or 4 or whatever. Usually the same channel that the NES or the Atari was set to. So you couldn't, obviously you couldn't watch TV and play Atari at the same time. Um, but you couldn't, ha if you had the Atari on, you could, you had to turn the cable box off. Because if you were trying to play Atari and the cable box was on, you were watching CBS. You weren't playing Atari. You couldn't see the, the video screen. It was, it was fucking bonkers. Um, later... Satellite got popular. Uh, Dish Network and DirecTV took off. Prime Star disappeared. It either turned into one of those or disappeared or whatever. I don't know what happened to it. I don't give a shit. I don't care. Uh, but you either had Dish Network or DirecTV. And they had a different cable box. Their cable box gave you a menu. And you would scroll through the menu and then select the channel. Uh, prior to that, your cable box, it was just a knob. You know, you would turn the knob on. It was just like the knob on your TV. You would turn the knob and it would tune it to the channel. Later, they got cable boxes with push buttons. 
And then later they got cable boxes that were similar to the cable boxes that the satellite TV used. And this is when digital cable, cable came on the scene. With the introduction to digital cable, you had to have a cable box because your TV couldn't, couldn't process the, the signal. Uh, and the cable companies had to give you a cable box, which had its own menu, similar to the satellite companies. And you would just scroll. You couldn't scroll through the channels anymore because if a ch if you hit a channel that was blocked, it would just bring up the this channel's blocked. Call this number to unlock it, and then you couldn't push up or down on the remote anymore because you were stuck on that channel. You had to exit. It was a nightmare. So you couldn't just scroll through channels anymore. You had to scroll through the uh, menu, which is more or less how it's done today. Again, this was before the introduction of DVRs, which that's a whole other video. That's a whole other video. But um, digital cable also, because it had to be more competitive with satellite, which was gaining ground uh, and getting less expensive because it was like cheaper to have Dish Network or Direct TV than it was to have cable at some points in history, cable companies had to adapt. And so what they did was they just started adding new channels. And this is when we started getting the cable channels, like the made for cable channels, like you know, like I mentioned, the Discovery Channels, uh, Headline News, Bloomberg Channel, C-SPAN, um, stuff like that. You know, Spike TV, well, T CNN, TNN, excuse me, would later become Spike TV, but, you know, stuff like that. Later you would get Tech TV and then G4. Later on you would get, you know, uh, Logo, uh, BET, you know, and more, and just more and more channels. And they also started adding, adding the digital music channels. And they start, started adding the sports channels, you know, NFL Network, uh, Rocky Mountain Sports, you know, above and beyond just ESPN and ESPN2. They started adding new channels. Um, my parents were, like I said, we were, you know, poor, but once they got better jobs, we weren't as poor, but they still, they, they juggled. So they would get... Uh, three months free or at a discount or whatever, uh, get a cable package for three months at a discount. And then after the three months, the price went up. But when the price went up, they would cancel and switch to another cable package, uh, another cable company, or they would switch to Dish Network until their promo ran out and then cancel Dish and then switch to DirecTV. And they just cycled through the different services, you know, so we could always have TV, but we didn't have to pay the outrageous prices for it. We were always trying to stay in the introductory price. In the mid to late 90s, a new cable service came on the scene, wireless cable. Um, I don't know if wireless cable is even still around. Um, and this is before IPTV, which was uh, a piece of shit, but that was another failed experiment. But the way wireless cable worked was it was a radio tower somewhere close by. And it just transmitted the signal to your house. You had to have an antenna on top of your house and pick up the signal. And that ran it to a special cable box that would give you the channels. So it was similar to satellite, but it was still cable. Um, it sucked. It really sucked. Because if there was a thunderstorm or a foggy day or rain or snow or any inclement weather, you didn't have TV. You just were SOL, no TV. Um, similar to the, the you know, pre-cable days, you know, with the antenna, the rabbit ears. Similar to that. Um, so those are our early experiences with cable. And then in the early to mid-2000s, uh, there was another shift. Cable companies added high-definition television, um, which meant that they had to, that they you had to have a digital cable box. They phased out the analog cable boxes with the digital cable boxes. And then they slowly started phasing those out with the HD cable boxes. Now, in the early days, you had to pay extra for the HD capable cable box and uh, an HD service fee to unlock the HD uh, version of the channel. So if you didn't, if you didn't pay for the HD premium... You could have TNT, and even though TNT was broadcasting in HD, you weren't getting the HD signal from TNT. You were getting the SD feed. So 
somewhere in all this um, jungle of a mess came Internet Protocol TV, IPTV. I don't understand how IPTV works. We tried it. We had it for like a month and we quickly got rid of it because it, it sucked. It was no good. It didn't work with a DVR. It wasn't compatible with the DVR. At least our our service wasn't. And uh, the channels, it was it was like it was like the wireless internet. Wire or not internet, wireless TV, in that sometimes the channels would just disappear. You know, they would just go away. So, I, I was not a fan of IPTV. I hated it. I preferred regular cable or satellite TV. Which, I, if I had a choice and I had the money, I would get cable over satellite. Um, but I don't have either. Today, I, I stick exclusively to streaming today because that's what I can afford. Uh, Tubi, mostly, because it's free. Um... Cable also saw a shift in the 90s in content. So let's go back to the beginning. Cable TV has its origins in broadcast TV. So what happened was people lived in the city. They uh, lived in cities that were congested and they lived in big apartment buildings made out of brick or whatever. And there was a lot of uh, asbestos and other materials in the building that blocked the TV signal from getting into your house. So people couldn't get over-the-air TV. So new companies sprang up that would set up microwave transmitters that would pick up uh, faraway TV stations. And then they would run a coax cable to your house and unlock the, the channels and give you access. Now, in the early days, it was just, you know, Whatever they, whatever the cable company could get over the air. So it was your standard TV, ABC, NBC, CBS, PBS, your um, local UHF stations, however many there were, if there were any, or whatever. There were no super stations. There, were, there was no CNN. There was nothing. That's what cable was. And the only reason you paid for it was because you couldn't put an antenna in you know, on top of your, a rabbit ears on top of your set and get a signal because all the buildings around town blocked the, the radio waves. And unless you lived in the, you know, up the, you know, the top level apartment and can put an antenna on the roof, you weren't able to get TV. And even if you could do that, you still couldn't get a good signal. Now in the late seventies, new, um, you know, satellite TV had come on, on the scene and the cable companies figured out that in addition to their microwave transmitters and receivers and whatnot, they could also point a big satellite dish at the satellite networks and pick up those channels and run those to your house as well, also through, for a subscription fee. So that's when we started to get things like the super stations, WGN, TBS, TNT, and then we got CNN, and then the, you know, the, the, you know, HBO and the, and the HBO copycats, you know, Cinemax and Showtime and then, you know, down the road. Um, in the 80s, we didn't add too many new cable channels. You know, ESPN sprang up overnight. Um, and then you got like MTV sprang up, Nickelodeon sprang up, you know, Disney launched the, the Disney channel. But the Disney channel, when it launched, was a, premi was a premium channel. You had to pay extra for like HBO, even if you had basic cable. You still had to buy it from Disney, not the cable company. Or the cable company had to work out a deal where they would buy it from Disney and sell it to you, whatever. It was it was complicated. Later, Disney became a part of the extended cable. It was never included in basic cable, ever, as far as I know. It was always extended. So you always had to go up, up, up a tier to get the Disney Channel anyways. And then in the 90s, we had the cable boom. All of a sudden, we went from maybe a dozen channels, 12 or 13 channels, to dozens of channels, nearly 100 channels. Uh, and then once we got to digital cable, once they added the sports channels and they added like, you know, the, you know, the foreign language channels, the Spanish language channels, the, you know, uh, the BBC America, then we started getting Al Jazeera TV and, and, and then all the um, 
digital music channels. Once they added those, we got channels, got into the hundreds of channels. And cable companies were quick to point out, you can get 200 plus channels with us for X amount of dollars. They always used that in the marketing. No, it wasn't really 200 channels. It was like 35 channels and then 150 music channels or something like that. You know, but they still counted each channel. They counted each one as a channel. But unfortunately, we kept getting new new channels. The service kept improving. It did. We kept getting new services. You know, uh, you know. Eventually, we got the preview channel, which turned into the TV guide channel, which just was replaced by the menu. Eventually, we got DVRs. We got on demand became a thing, which re which replaced pay per view. And um. Things like that. But as the service expanded and they kept adding new channels and services and features, the price kept going up. And after a while, the internet um, became standard and kept getting faster. We got to broadband internet and broadband internet just kept getting faster and faster. And one day, you know, Netflix, who had a DVD uh, rental service, said, let's just put some movies on a server. And people can pay us uh, a fee for, you know, access to our cable channel through their computer instead of the cable company. They could get it directly from us. And this created what we have today, streaming, which more or less has replaced cable and satellite. Um, yes, cable companies still exist and there are weirdos out there who still have cable. I imagine they're rich people or people who are just stuck on the past. I don't know. I can't imagine why anyone would pay 180 bucks a month for cable. But they do, I guess. Um, I can't afford it. I can't even afford the whatever, $20 a month or whatever it is today for Netflix. Yeah, if they ever went back to the $8 a month, I could get, I could, I could get Netflix. But they're out of my price range right now. Can't afford it. Um, so that's pretty much the story of cable TV. Um... Uh, yeah, I have nostalgia for cable TV, but the thing is, I was alive during the time where cable TV became a thing, blew up, and then faded into obscurity. So, like, I was alive the whole time cable was basically relevant. And so I have nostalgia for it, but my nostalgia is fractured because I have memories of, you know, the old cable box with the dial knob. I have memories of the digital cable box. I have memories of the mini, the mini satellite, you know, Dish, Prime Star, uh, Direct TV, etc. I have memories of the H, you know, of the of the digital box, the DVR, um, IPTV, wireless cable, etc. So my cable TV memories run the gamut. Uh, my experiences were very uh, varied. Um, at the end of the day, I don't miss cable uh, because. You have to turn on the TV at 10 o'clock a.m. to watch Friends. And you get two episodes of Friends and then interrupted with commercials, by the way, and edited for TV, which means they cut out a lot of the jokes. And um, then you have to flip over the channel and watch, you know, Steve Harvey do whatever the fuck Steve Harvey does for 30 minutes and then flip over to another channel and listen to Al... Um, Anderson Cooper yap for an hour and then flip the channel uh, to MTV and cry because it's a soap opera and it's not music videos and you're like why are they still calling it MTV just change the name to teen TV for God's sake um, yeah so cable I don't miss it you know I miss you know what we had in the 90s when we had it, before we had what we have today. But I don't miss it today because I can pop on Tubi or, you know, Amazon Prime or, you know, the uh, fishing sites. And I can find whatever the fuck I want. You know, I can do, hey, I'm in the mood for a movie. Type it in. There it is. You know? Yeah, it is getting expensive if you have the paid streaming services. You got to have multiple streaming services. Like I said, there's other ways around that. But anyways, uh, yeah, have fun. Stay cool.